Loader maintenance. The loader is gonna be under a lot of pressure when lifting and has many pivot points on the loader. On each pivot point is a grease zerk, as shown here. These grease zerks are points in which grease is applied with a grease gun, which will be provided in your kit, that will, that will force tubed grease into this cavity. Within each, within each side of the loader, there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight pivot points on each side. This should be greased about every other day that this is in use. If you are not using the loader, it is not as important to grease every day or every other day. When applying grease, typically you will apply two to three pumps per zerk or until you are able to see grease come out of the sides of the actual pivot area. This is essential that it is done. This is the front end axle of the tractor. There are also grease points which be, should be maintained about monthly on the front end of this tractor. Specifically on the front pivot point, which is where the tractor and the front of the tractor meet up, that grease circle will be located immediately to the front and underneath the pin. There are also pivot points for the front tires to pivot on the front axle, and these grease zerks are immediately behind in the center of this pivot point. Another important point that will need grease every day, about every five hours, is the drive line. The reason it's so important that this gets greased so often is that there is a lot of heat and torque transfer or power transfer through this point. To grease the drive line, there will be a zerk at the joint in the very top of the unit. It can be seen down through the top. It sits within the yoke of the drive line. There's also a corresponding grease point in the tractor side of this drive line yoke. It is also important that a couple pumps are given to this point on the shield. This will allow the internal drive line to spin freely inside the shield without seizing to that shaft. Let's talk about engine maintenance. All engines like clean oil. Dirty oil will result in an engine failure. This tractor should be serviced about every 200 hours. The hour meter is in the center of the cluster that we talked about in an earlier video. It is a wise practice to write down the hours at every service so we know how far into that service we are. To service this tractor, there is an oil plug at the bottom of the drain, the drain pan. It is a smart practice to operate the tractor roughly 15 minutes before to heat the oil. This will allow it to drain more fully and more completely from the bottom of the drain pan. Once the oil plug has been removed, the oil will drain into a pan and, collected, be, er, and be collected. The oil filter can also be removed at this time. And the cap should be removed to allow for air to enter the system and to completely drain of all cavities from the oil. Once the oil is finished draining out of the oil plug as well as the filter, the cap or the plug can then be replaced and snugly fit. Do not put this cap on or this oil plug in too tight or you'll strip the threads and much engine work will need to be done. After the plug has been replaced, apply the new filter. Make sure that it is hand tight and snug. Again, don't over tighten. Make sure it is just tight enough so that oil does not leak. Fresh oil can be applied to the oil fill. We will have in your service manual a proper spec or amount that should typically be used by this engine. But always start the tractor, let it run for at least one minute, and then checking the dipstick, make sure that it is in the proper place. And make sure the dipstick always makes it back in its slot so that it can keep the engine clean. If the 
tractor does need oil at that time, it is okay to add a little more. One thing to note, the oil through the dipstick should be checked every day prior to use. Just like the engine, it is important that the transmission is peri periodically serviced. This is done not as regularly as the engine, about every 1500 hours. This level should be checked more often than that though. About every morning when the oil is checked on the dipstick on the front of the engine, we should always be checking the sight glasses which we have shown in a previous video on the rear of the tractor which are located right next to the PTO driveline or the PTO output shaft. That oil level should be right between the two sight glasses. The hydraulic oil and transmission oil will be checked and changed underneath the transmission. There will be a drain plug. The process is very similar to changing the engine oil. The plug will be removed, the oil dropped. The, oil, the transmission filter, which is directly behind this tire, will be removed and changed, and then new oil will be reapplied from the fill point, which is behind the tractor or at the rear of the tractor to the top right, which we have shown in a previous video. This is the side hub of the gear of the actual spade drum. There's bearings and other mounting hardware within this cap, and you'll notice at the very end is a grease zerk. Grease should be applied to this grease zerk to lubricate the pivoting point or the bearing within about every 10 hours. This is the chain case of the spader. This is filled with heavy grease which lubes the sprockets and the idlers uh, within this side. This chain case underneath this case turns the power harrow at the rear. This has a breather. This silver point at the top is the breather which allows this to breathe. This area should be kept fairly clean and should be periodically checked. This is the rear power harrow of the IMAT spader. You will notice there's a drum and there are little fingers which are mounted to the back of this drum. The purpose of these fingers and this drum is to pack and to level what was, early, what was spaded just in front of this roller. These fingers are also used to help to push the remainder of the residual organic matter beneath the soil so that it can decompose and break down. Keep an eye on these fingers. They will potentially from time to time break off. We will send extra fingers. To replace these, you simply grind smooth the area that the old one broke off, and using the welder that has been provided, you will weld on new tines at the same angle and the same distance uh, apart from each other that the previous ones or the factory ones were welded at. It is very important that when we're running the spader, that when we are in the field, we mount the top point into either a top or a bottom position so that the rear can float. This is important so that not too much weight is placed upon the rear power harrow. This is the main gearbox of the IMAN spader. It is very important that this is kept cool and with proper oil levels. If not, the spader will be unusable. There's a sight glass at the rear. You should always be able to see oil within this sight glass. If you do not see oil, then oil needs to be added. Oil will be added through the fill hole, which is also a dual purpose vent. This will be removed and oil added. The oil that should be used will be sent to you, but it is also labeled on the top of the machine. Only use this specific fluid in this gearbox. This is the right hand side of the spader. Again, the stands are down, so we know that the spader is in park or transport position. When operating, the stands will need to be raised. This is the right side gearbox, which takes power from the gearbox, which we just spoke of, and turns that power into the spader drum. 
There is also oil and grease, which should be in this cover to keep those points lubed. There is a breather vent, which should be kept clean. And there is also, on the immediate back side, a grease zerk, which should receive grease about every 10 hours, which probably in the amount of about 10 to 15 pumps. This is the rear's shredder behind me. This unit will be used for flailing lighter material, such as small sticks or grass, and at the end of the season, corn stalks. This will help to cut large pieces of debris or smaller pieces of debris into tiny pieces. It'll be easier to be worked and put back into the soil. With this machine, you will apply it or hook it onto the rear of the tractor using the three-point, like the spader, which we have showed in other units on how to hook it up. It'll be hooked up very similar. Let me do a quick walk around to show you the various points or various uh, items on this unit. This drive line will need to be greased daily. As you will notice, the grease zerk is on the center of the drive shaft. There are two holes or windows in the drive shaft cover that have to be matched. Do that one more time. That have to be matched. Otherwise, you will not see it. Once you find the window, you turn the cover or the shield until you find the actual zerk. And then grease is applied to that point daily, probably three, four, maybe five pumps. This is the left side of the rear's flail shredder. A couple key points to take away on this unit is there's a lot of moving parts, particularly underneath the hood of this, of this shredder are many little knives that are going to spin at a very high RPM to cut and to size debris into small pieces. Always stay clear of the driveline. Always make sure driveline shields are in place and that chains are attached so that they do not spin. And always stay away from any moving parts while this unit is running. Underneath these shields are belts, drivelines, and many things that can be very dangerous to the untrained operator. Let me give it a quick example or let me show what's under this side shield. By lifting up on this lever, the side cover opens up. This is the main drive belt system of this unit. It should always stay very snug. If it does not stay snug, the belts will slip and you will burn these and these will be, these will be garbage. To keep these tight, there is a hex nut or hex thread on the back, which you will be able to tighten to keep this tight. Also in this shield, you will notice that there's a pulley with a bearing behind it, and there is also a bearing assembly here at this point as well. On this bearing, there is a grease zerk at the top. We've explained grease zerks before. These will need to be greased daily. Every moving point on this unit, including the rear roller, has a grease zerk and will need to be greased daily. Otherwise, the bearings will stop working. This is the right side of the flail shredder. Let's point out a key points on this side. As you will know, notice, we have the right side bearings on this side. We talked about grease zerks. Here's another grease zerk that will need to be greased daily when in operation. On the back, I will show the roller and those grease points. But from this camera angle, I also want to show the gearbox. This gearbox takes 90 weight gear oil. And let me show you how you will check its levels. These levels will not need to be checked that often unless you see an oil seepage or an oil leak, or if you're just doing annual or, or semi-annual maintenance. To check the, the fluid level on this, you will remove the center plug and the top plug. The overall gearbox oil should always remain right in the middle. So if, it is, if you remove this plug and no oil comes out, you know that you need to put oil in the top plug until it comes out of this middle plug. Once it reaches this level, you can then reinsert both caps. Service points as well. You'll notice a U-joint, which has a grease zerk in the top of this input as well as in the two inputs or, or U-joints within the cover on this transfer shaft. There is a grease zerk in this hole 
and there one is one in this hole as well that should be greased daily when this unit is in operation. This is the rear roller, which will work as a packer or, or a, a crimper. After you have flailed, it'll help to roll over the material and to keep it flat on the ground. There's a bearing on the right side and a bearing at the left side. Each bearing has a small grease cirque, which will need to be greased daily during operation. This is your corn planter. As you can see, it's a two row corn planter with two hoppers and two water row shanks. This planter has already been set up at your desired spacing. To use this, you will add seed to the top of the hoppers, then replace the lid, make sure it's locked on tight, and then you will start driving in the direction that you uh, desire to plant. Evergreen will provide more training on this in your town or your village because there's a lot of intricate parts here that can be manipulated or changed. But as it is set right now, should work for your current operation and you shouldn't have to change anything.